While there were many bizarre animals during the Triassic period, there was nothing else quite like Lotosaurus. While it might have looked like a dinosaur, Lotosaurus was instead more closely related to crocodilians, belonging to the larger clade, Pseudosuchia. A quadruped, Lotosaurus was about 2.5 meters long and a little less than 1 meter tall. While small, it was not built for speed, with a plumper body than most other Triassic Pseudosuchians. Unlike most of its relatives, its head was small and possessed a toothless beak, which gave it a vaguely turtle-like appearance. But its most prominent feature was its tall neural spines. They are somewhat reminiscent of those that form the cells of some early synapses like Dimetrodon, or dinosaurs like Spinosaurus, and Aronosaurus. Lotosaurus was not the only Pseudosuchian that possessed large neural spines. Tenosauriscids, like Arizonosaurus, also had elongated neural spines, which did form a sail. However, Lotosaurus's neural spines were shorter and wider than these species. This condition is closer to that of mammals that possess humps, like bison. Therefore, Lotosaurus most likely possessed one as well, perhaps a sore fat or anchor large muscles. Assuming Lotosaurus did possess a sail, the primary hypothesis for why it and definitively sailed species had them, is that they were most likely used to attract mates, like many other bizarre features seen in both living and extinct species. While once thought to be for thermoregulation, more recent research has found that sails would have been far less efficient in that role than once thought. With its rotund body, Lotosaurus was ill-suited for catching mobile prey, leading to it usually being reconstructed as a herbivore. This would explain its large abdomen, as plants are more difficult to digest than meat, herbivores generally require more space for their digestive system. Its beak seems to have had a strong bite force. This would be helpful in consuming the tough vegetation common in most parts of the largely arid Triassic. However, it would be less helpful when consuming the softer plants present in the prehistoric wetlands Lotosaurus's fossils were preserved in. This may simply be the result of preservation bias, with Lotosaurus potentially being much more widespread. Alternatively, the beak's strong bite force may have evolved not to crush hard food items, but instead to ward off predators. Another possibility is that Lotosaurus was instead Duriophagius, a species that consumed hard-shelled prey. Specifically, it may have eaten shellfish, which were common in the same sediments Lotosaurus was found in. With Lotosaurus's strong bite, opening their shells would not have been a problem. For now, like so much else about it, the diet of Lotosaurus remains uncertain. This is largely due to, despite how unique it is, and the presence of several complete skeletons, Lotosaurus remains heavily under-researched. Despite being named in 1975, Lotosaurus has yet to even receive a full description. Still, there is some insight into their social lives, namely that they had social lives. The only site with confirmed Lotosaurus fossils is a bone bed in the southern Hunan province in China, which contains the remains of at least 38 individual Lotosaurus. When Lotosaurus was alive, this area was subtropical, with moderate rainfall and pronounced wet and dry seasons. Since there are very few fossils of other vertebrates at the site, it seems that the Lotosaurus died and most likely lived together. Unfortunately, the precise age of the site is unknown, which hampers understanding Lotosaurus's evolutionary history. While most of the major land masses were already part of the megacontinent of Pangaea by the start of the Triassic, Lotosaurus' home, in what is now southern China, remained an isolated subcontinent until the Middle Triassic. The possible age of the Lotosaurus bone bed ranges from just before to just after southern China became connected to the rest of the world. So did Lotosaurus evolve in isolation, or did it, or its ancestors, live elsewhere in Pangaea, and only colonized southern China once it became linked with the mainland. What is known is that Lotosaurus was a member of Paposauroidae. While Paposauroidae contained many bizarre species, none of them looked very similar to Lotosaurus. The previously mentioned Tenosauriscids were also Paposauroids. Because of its tall neural spines, Lotosaurus was once thought to be a Tenosauriscid itself, though it is now seen as a more distant relation. The closest relatives of Lotosaurus were instead the nimble Shuvosaurids. Like Lotosaurus, Shuvosaurus had beaks and may have been herbivorous, but even they differed considerably from Lotosaurus. Like Paposaurus, the namesake of Paposauridae, the Shuvosaurids were bipedal. 
as Paposaurus was the closest known relative of the clade formed by Lotosaurus and the Shuvosaurids. This means that both the species more derived and more basal than Lotosaurus were bipeds. This either means that Lotosaurus had a bipedal ancestor and later reverted to a quadrupedal stance, or that bipedalism evolved twice in Paposauroidae, once in Paposaurus, and again in the Shuvosaurids. Even among its closest known relatives, Lotosaurus was unique. While a lot is still not known about it, what is known is certainly impressive. Hopefully, a full description of Lotosaurus, along with further discoveries and research, will help us learn even more about this fascinating reptile. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something interesting. So what do you think about Lotosaurus? Do you think it was more like a herbivore or shellfish eater? And do you think it had a hump or a sail? Be sure to leave your answer in the comments below. Have a great day, and if you enjoyed the video, please remember to hit the like button.